reading through the question, they keep mentioning this thing called work. What is the work done on the system? What is the work done on the lift? In everyday terms, you may understand work as homework or going to a job or things like that. But in physics, work has a very specific meaning. It has to do with energy, actually. So uh, remember I talked about in class that you have this thing called energy that sits in a bucket or something, and it's conserved. It doesn't magically appear or disappear. And to change the amount of energy in the system, you have to add energy to it or take energy out. That's what it means to be conserved. It doesn't appear or disappear magically. And the way you add energy or remove energy is by this work thing. And how much work you're doing is related to the force multiplied by the displacement. Now, here the direction actually matters. The real thing to remember for this level is that you want the force that is parallel to a displacement because thinking back, we need to be changing the speed, right? In order to change the speed of a certain object, you have to apply force in the direction that it is moving in or opposite to it, I guess, in the case of wanting to get rid of some energy. So this is the basic equation that I'll be working with because we are given the displacement here and we can work out the tension. Starting off this problem then, let's start with a free body diagram because we have to work out some forces. There's an elevator and it's got a mass of 1500 kilograms. So straight down you have M times G. It's being lifted by a cable by some tension. And then there's a friction force which by the wording, because we're lifting the elevator, the elevator is going up, so the friction must be opposite that going downwards. And the displacement is also going to be upwards, just to keep that in mind. Not part of free body diagram, but still useful to keep in track. Putting an X and Y on to complete my free body diagram, we can start trying to answer the question. First off, in part A, we want the work that is done by the cable, so the tension. I guess then we have to find out what the tension is. Same as always from chapters before, sum of forces, in this case just the y direction, all we care about is equal to m times a in the y direction. But because we're constant speed, that is going to be zero. And I list out my forces, T is positive, minus FF, minus MG. So clearly T is equal to FF plus MG, isolating it, so we can work out a number, which is 100 Newtons plus, uh, this is probably gonna be way bigger than anything else that the friction matter, but it's good to have that just in case. Putting out all in, we get 14800 zero, zero newtons. To find out the work, we have tension times the delta D. In this case, the tension is going parallel to the displacement, so there's no funny angle things here. The T is equal to T parallel in this case, and they're going the same direction, so it's not going to be negative. 14800 zero, zero newton multiplied by my distance, which I were told is 40 meters. So we get a fairly big number. And the unit is Newton meter, which you probably know is equal to one joule. One Newton meter is one joule, standard unit of energy. Getting a little more space here. Part B, they want the work done by gravity or specifically FG, which is my MG. If I quickly sketch the free body diagram again, here's my T, here's my MG, and there's my FF. The work done is equal to FG, specifically the parallel of FG times delta D. Parallel though, they are parallel because the displacement is that way, but it's going the opposite way. So we actually have to use negative MG multiplied by my distance. 
which is 1500 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second square negative multiplied by 40 meters so you have kilogram that's a newton times a meter we get joules and we get negative 5.88 times 10 to 5 joules it's in a sense negative work because that's taking energy out of the system you're lifting with so much force it's supposed to go so fast but gravity is slowing you back down so it's negative work taking energy out of the system and then finally they want the total work that is done so then you have to look at the third force as well which is going to be my ff also considering just the parallel bit this case again we're going opposite so we have 100 newton negative multiplied by 40 meters so that's going to be negative 4,000 joules. So the total work or the sum of all the work would be equal to zero joules. In fact, I can tell you that in employing my conservation of energy, if you look at the total kinetic energy of the system plus all the work that you do on it, would give you the total kinetic energy of the system at some later time. Note that I'm not including gravitational potential energy because we've treated it like an external force by lumping it in the work here. Here's all the external work. We know V1 is equal to V2 because of constant V. Also, 1 half mv1 square is equal to 1 half mv2 square. Those go away, so the total work already from that you know is going to have to be zero in order to maintain the same speed. So just two way of showing you how work and energy is related and how to work out the work when all the forces and displacement are parallel. Sometimes they go in the same direction, which you get positive work. You're adding, you're speeding the system up, you're adding energy to the system or the force can be applied opposite to the way you're going in which case you're slowing the system down you're taking energy away from the system giving you a negative amount of work